Hello everyone, uh, my name is Vincenzo Reale and I am an architect and a structural engineer currently working in the advanced digital engineering team in Arup London. In this video I'm going to show you what we are going to cover in the level 1 course of Python for Rhino and Grasshopper. This is the list of the topics we are going to cover today. I will provide you a general outline of the Python syntax. We're going to look into variables, data types, statement, flow, to make you acquainted with the Python scripting language. Successively, I will show you one of the library required to manipulate geometry in Rhino, um, the RhinoScript syntax uh, library. Uh, and through different case studies, you will become familiar with the basic script technique required to develop a parametric workflow independently. Lastly, how to create and customize Grasshopper components will be shown to you, opening up for you the opportunity to develop new independent and customized tool within Grasshopper. Firstly, I wanted to give you some information regarding the software that you will require in order to follow the course. And actually, there is just one piece of software that you will need to have installed in your machine. And this is going to be Rhinoceros 6 or Rhino 6, as it's usually called. And this could be easily downloaded from the rhino3d.com slash download website. From here, you can download a full working version for 90 days. And then eventually you could buy a license if you're interested in the software. So before the start of the course, please go to the website and download a working version of Rhino 6 if you don't have it already. Uh, the course is going to be working also if you have uh, Rhino 5 installed in your machine. For the purposes of what we are going to do today, there is not going to be any difference if you have a Rhino 5 installed instead of Rhino 6. But now let's talk about the core topic of this seminar which is Python. So Python is a scripting language. It has been invented in the early 90s and ever since it has been developed and it's developed to this day. Uh, Python has encountered a very uh, great success amongst coder and one of the reasons is that it's universally considered a very simple language, meaning it's very concise and allows you to write effectively your own tools just by coding very little number of lines of code, which can be very handy, you can imagine. Um, another reason uh, behind the success of Python is that there is a large community of users uh, that are constantly using Python and, and have developed throughout the years many, many tools and libraries. You can code directly in Python to interact with all sorts of different softwares. Where can you find information about Python? One of the main resources that I always suggest is python.org, which is the official website. In the official website, you can find information about the different version, uh, the different libraries, um, download uh, plugins, uh, uh, and also uh, discuss uh, topics within the Python community. So python.org is the main website if you're interested in the language alone. But what if you're interested in using Python within Rhino? Um, and I believe that you are because you're following this course. Uh, one of the main resources and I always suggest to check out is the McNeil forum, which you can find at discourse.mcneil.com. And in here, there is a specific forum which is related to scripting, not only with Python, but with all the different scripting languages which are supported by um, Rhino and Grasshopper. And this is a very great community. And if you have any question about developing in a tool in Python for Rhino, and you post a message in here, if you encounter a problem, you don't know how to solve, there are people that will reply in a matter of minutes to your query. So this is very very important resource and i always encourage people to check this out and lastly for any general question about coding and coding issues uh, curiosity i always suggest people also to visit the stack overflow website so without further ado let's just jump into rhino and see what coding with python in rhino is all about
So if you can please open your Rhino, I imagine you will get something like this. You have the standard four views, which are different views of your working environment. You have possibly some layers. You might have more layers by default than what I have at the moment. And um, I'm not going to go into the detail about modeling in Rhino. I expect you to have already a little bit of knowledge about it. If you don't have knowledge about the modeling in Rhino, I suggest you to follow another webinar about modeling in Rhino or look at the resources which are available in the MacNail website. Now, how can you make use of Python within Rhino? What do you need to install? What do you need to uh, get? You do not actually have to get anything because since Rhino version 5, Python is already embedded into the Rhino environment. You just have to open the console. How do you open the console? There are two different ways to open the Python console within uh, Rhino. You can go either into Tools, Python Script, Edit, or you can go into the command bar and type, as I usually do, Edit Python Script. So this is a command to open the Python console. So you can type in here, Edit Python Script. And you're going to get this window. This window is the Python console within Rhino. We are going to write our code into this blank space in here. So you can just start and type anything. And you're going to fill this space. If you want to enlarge or reduce the text in this window, you can just press Ctrl and use the mouse wheel to enlarge or reduce the text. I'm going to delete this nonsense for the moment. This window here, this small part of the screen below where you write the code, is uh, the output a window for Python. So basically every message that you're going to um, send to the user or any error message or any message from Python or Python libraries are going to be shown in this area in here. We're going to see that in a second. And lastly, um, here on the left, you have a set of uh, menus. These menus are actually showing all the different libraries which are loaded automatically with your Python. The most important and the one that we are going to look at today is the RhinoScript syntax. This library has been developed by the people at MacNeil in order to allow you to use Python and to make it talk to the Rhino environment. So basically all the Rhino commands are somehow wrapped into this library and we can use standard Python code in order to call them. I know this might look a bit uh, dry and hard to grasp at the beginning. Uh, coding has a very steep curve of uh, learning at the beginning. But just to make you understand what this is all about and to show you what, what sort of one of the objective of the day is going to be, I'm going to show you a script that I have previously developed and I'm going to show you how, how it works. And you can look at this as one of the objective of the day. Namely, you want to be able to write a script capable of taking a geometry from Rhino and uh, run, perform some operation and give you a result as quickly as possible. I know that uh, the script I've generated requires a geometry. So I'm just going to quickly draw just a surface within Rhino. I'm going to use the uh, surface from corner points command and I'm just going to quickly draw a surface. I'm going to select it. I'm going to take its control point and raise him just to make it a little bit more interesting. Okay, so given that I have a surface in Rhino, let's say um, I want to generate a tessellation of this surface. I wanted to generate a roof structure with uh, a truss in the part below and a facade package on the top. And this is the reason why I developed this code some years ago for the Venice Biennale. So I can just call my script and you can see here the script that I have pre-prepared. Um, there are some functions in it, there are some inputs which are required, there are some commands. Don't be scared about the length of this script. This is particularly long, but usually a very good script can do the job with uh, something around uh, 50 
to 100 lines. So this is 400 lines, probably excessive and too long for what it was required to do. Um, once you have written your code and you have debugged it, we're going to see how it works today, um, you need to run the script. The way you run the script, you just press this play button here, this screen button. This is instantly going to send the script to uh, Python, which is going to do Python and the Rhino API, which are going to process it and perform the operation you have coded within the script. So I just press play. Uh, you see sometimes you're going to leave some messages for the user. So for example, select a surface. You don't always have to have a surface to begin with, but sometimes it's useful to have it. So I'm going to select the surface as requested. You'll see that in a matter of seconds, a set of layers have been created. A structure to support my surface has been generated, wireframe in this case. And here I have a sample of a facade package that I wanted to apply to the surface. The script is asking me to press enter in order to confirm if I want to proceed with the generation. So I'm going to press it. And again, the script is running in the background. It's fairly quick. And again, in a few seconds, it has generated a fully complete structure above my surface. So I think it's worth highlighting the benefit of a scripted approach like this one to design. Uh, one is that it's adaptable. You can uh, input uh, different types of surfaces. We just generated one very quickly now. And you will have the same rule apply to all these different surfaces. Secondly, it's very quick because it's running in the background. While other types of software like um, Grasshopper, we're going to see how to implement Python in Grasshopper. But generally in Grasshopper, you have visualization always running. So if something is very complex, then just by tuning a bit, the geometry is going to take a very, very long time to update. Here, everything is running in the background, so it's very quick. Thirdly, um, I think scripting, writing information and instruction in a text format is a very neat way to approach a design process. You'll see that if you get confident with uh, uh, scripting, uh, it's going to become very natural for you to give instruction to software such as Rhino to generate design, to generate geometries, architecture, whatever you're interested in. I'm very excited to show you how to code with Python and I'm looking forward to seeing you very soon.